guys and welcome to my January favourites. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I want to do kind of more of like a Sunday catch up video and I've only done one of those so far just because sometimes it's quite hard to kind of have like enough content to talk about every week and also I have had a bit of a bad cold which I always feel like is then in turn a flu. I don't think it was a flu, I think it was just a bad cold. So I've just been a little bit slow on content generally and it's January well it was January, it's now February and I can't explain to you how excited I am that it is February because January was a long, cold, dark month and at least February is a shorter month but I suspect it's going to be as dark and as cold. It's also my birthday month, it's my birthday on Tuesday which I'm actually a little bit indifferent to this year more than ever weirdly. Usually I'm quite excited, I feel like some people get a bit sad that it's their birthday. I don't get sad it's my birthday, I feel like you're always fortunate to reach whatever age you're reaching but this year I'm weirdly not like overly excited I'm just fine about turning 27 well actually no I am quite excited about the year to come probably more so than previously but I'm not excited about actually it being my birthday but I'm gonna start with beauty favorites but I have a, a quite a few book and series favorites as well beauty wise I'm gonna mention my skin is so dry I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera you might be able to tell because it is that bad I also applied my makeup with a a like buffing brush which I would not recommend you do if your skin is quite dry just because I find that it really like makes it a bit flaky but if anyone has any tips for really dry skin I think it is just this time of year but please do leave them down below any products that you really really like I know I shouldn't be having hot baths or having the heating on too high but it's so cold that that's all I really want to do but if you do have any recommendations leave them down below but the first thing I want to talk about is the Moroccan oil uh, Moroccan oil treatment. I've really been liking this. I think packaging wise it's great. It is glass and then it's got a pump which I think is just fab because it's just really easy to use. I like this because I have quite knotty hair and it really helps detangle my hair and also it makes your hair dry a little bit quicker. I'm not sure if it's necessarily like the best for your hair but I don't think it's I don't think it's bad for your hair. I'm just not sure if it actually penetrates deep in because I've heard mixed information about that but either way I really really like this. I've been using this on and off probably for about since it originally came out, I want to say like six, seven years ago, maybe maybe up to ten years ago, I have been using this a really, really long time, and I do really like it, and I'm glad that I've got another full bottle on my hands. I actually just finished a little small one as well. Then a product that has always been a favourite of mine, but I wanted to talk about because there's new packaging. Is it packaging? It's, it's got a new look. It's my favourite brush ever, which is the Real Technique setting brush. I use this to set my makeup, but I also use it to highlight. I have like separate ones for both things and then I occasionally if I've got a clean one I really need to like either really contour or really buff out a contour or add a little bit of blush I think it's just about the right size but it's a tiny bit on the small size for that but either way I absolutely love this brush I think this is my fifth or sixth one of these I like the new packaging but I liked the old packaging too and maybe I'll grow to like this one more I'm not sure but currently I just think it's it's quite nice and also I probably wouldn't buy any of the old packaging unless it's on sale but I feel like now you might as well have the new packaging so kind of have a look around for that. Skincare wise has been one product that I've been really loving and it's the Sunday Riley Tidal. This is a brightening enzyme water cream. It is quite nice at adding some hydration but it's not really like enough especially this time of year. I have It's got hyaluronic acid which works for me quite well and it's brightening which is probably why I like it most even without makeup just with this my skin my skin does look significantly better and it says use it day and night I typically only use it daytime occasionally nighttime and then I actually had a mini facial maybe last week now from skin laundry which was really cool it was like a it was a um a light facial it wasn't really what I expected but I did like it I don't know what I expected but I was a little bit sick and then I was kind of like wow you're flashing lights in my face it wasn't painful for anything like that I was a little bit nervous that it would be it wasn't at all and I was quite sensitive and I actually think it's a, a really good facial I think it was tainted by the fact that I wasn't feeling 100% but the facialist was wearing this lipstick and it just looked amazing it was more of a gloss it was like a creamy lipstick and I was like what are you wearing and she was like oh it's hourglass and I was like hmm could you tell me what the colour is and she was like oh, I'm really sorry I can't remember it's just the nude one that was in their Christmas crackers I think she said so then I went down to hourglass and I asked them what colour was in their Christmas set and they told me it was this this is the hourglass girl in peacemaker this is such a lovely colour Initially I thought it was a tiny bit brown and it is verging on the brown side 
but it is just so so beautiful it's just a lovely nude it is actually what i've got on but then over i've got an hourglass oil which are quite nice as well but i'm sure you'll be seeing me wearing this lots it's currently like my favorite lip color i just think it's beautiful but my favorite lip product without a doubt that i have discovered in the last pff, probably ever is the la roche posay sisaplast lips this is so good like i mentioned i had a, really, a pretty bad cold and like my nose and my lips were just so dry my nose is still quite dry i feel like i haven't found anything to cure that so again if you have any recommendations leave those down below especially like it was just cracked grim i know my lips were so dry and so sore and then i found this just lying around the house i kind of had it to the side but I felt that my lips were never like bad enough to kind of require it and then I was like no I'm gonna give this a go and I remember I had, I had to like go and search for where I had what safe place I had put this in and I found it and I used it for like a day and I was like oh no this isn't that good and then like day two it all clicked honestly give this a good go for about three days before you decide whether it's good or not I just think it's amazing my lips are still like ever so slightly they're not dry but it's cold outside but like my actual lips aren't sore and my actual lips are very um, moisturized and i just think this is amazing it's rrp i think it's six pounds which is such a good price but you can get it on offer i believe at the moment for four pounds i just think this is the best thing ever i'm probably about a third of the way through i've been using this pretty much non-stop for about two weeks and i mean like eight times a day maybe even more than that occasionally because i was just that dry and i've tried like using other items eight times a day and they've been good but nothing's been as good as this even like 40 pound lip balms 20 pound lip balms this has been the absolute best thing i have used potentially ever it's so so good i cannot recommend it enough on to books and i finished two books one i actually had started last year but for some reason i just hadn't made it to the end i like books but i very much have to force myself to get through them no matter how much i enjoy a book i have to force myself to read them basically if i stop reading for like a day that's it like i have to really make an effort to get back to it but i made that effort and i got back to reading the lily allen book and I loved this. I cannot recommend it enough if you like autobiographies. I'm not necessarily a huge Lily Allen fan, or I wasn't a huge Lily Allen fan. Now I do really like her, actually. I've got a few podcasts that I want to listen to that she's been in. I just think this was such a beautiful book. And oh yeah, I really recommend it. I mentioned before that I find it's just a book that I can relate to a little bit. I think just because she's a Londoner, everything else is very, very different to me. But I just loved it and... I'd highly recommend it. And then another book which I actually got through probably recordly quick. Is that even a word? I got through in record time for me is The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Auschwitz. I never know how to pronounce that properly. Auschwitz, I think. Um, it's a Sunday Times bestseller and it's by Heather Morris. It's a true story. It's beautiful. It's heartbreaking. I cried. It's... I... I do quite enjoy, I feel like enjoy is the wrong word, but I do quite enjoy reading um, stories about the war. I just think it's, oh, I don't know, I just think it's like painfully sad, but also it was painfully heartwarming. It was such a beautiful story to hear about. I've like gone on and googled the guy who it's based on and I just can't recommend it enough. It is obviously very sad, it's very moving. It is, in the end, oh, I don't want to give it away. I didn't leave feeling... Oh, I don't know how to put it like I was sad about the circumstances they were in but I don't want to give it away I just I just think it's a really really good book and now I'm reading The Keeper of Lost Things which I'm really struggling with people have absolutely loved that book but I really really struggle with fiction and even though this is still not like it's not an autobiography at all I loved it and I I just struggle knowing that it's not a real story it's so stupid and i realized that and then at some point in february i think i'm gonna oh, probably shouldn't but i think i am going to buy um dolly alderton everything i know about love in paperback i do already have two hardback copies probably don't need a paperback and it's stupid but there's a new chapter in it and i really want to read that i'm just a huge huge dolly alderton fan i say this literally every single video i film and then i just want to read I'm going to try and finish Keep of Lost Things and then I'm going to try and get through Michelle Obama's 
autobiography as well i've heard that's amazing now on to ent other entertainment like film and stuff and, and um podcasts podcast wise this is the last one i'm going to talk about dolly alderton in this video dolly alderton's love stories is back for season two to celebrate the launch of her her paperback i have finished both episodes see the second episode came out today the second episode i actually wasn't really sure i was going to enjoy it at the beginning and then at the end i had to pause it so i've got probably like another how long do I have left? I've got another eight minutes left because it just became so beautiful and so like heartwarming and uplift, just heartwarming. So I had to pause it because I was gonna cry before this video and I did not want that to happen. But super excited that that's back. Jessie Ware's Table Manners is back, which I, I enjoy. I don't think it's groundbreaking. I just think it's a nice way to kind of pass the time. But I actually have a list of new podcasts that I want to start. And if you have any recommendations, leave those down below. I'm gonna start them probably in like 20 minutes once I finish filming this video. I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna, whilst I drive, I love listening to podcasts. So I watched Luther, which I was a little bit unsure about. Um, and then I absolutely loved it. I don't think it's as good as Bodyguard. And I think the first few seasons were a little bit better than the last few seasons or at least the last one I, I wasn't gripped by but it's a great series it's on Netflix it's on BBC I would highly highly recommend it I finally got around to watching the fire festival documentary again that's on Netflix I think I gave it a seven or an eight out of ten I think it's only like an hour and a half it's interesting I mean it's not gonna take up that much time of your life and it's just something easy that slit in if you're looking for something to watch this weekend or anything and then one that I just really really surprised me I absolutely loved was Netflix Sex Education. I thought there was 10 episodes, there's only 8 and there's only one season, it is a new series. I was probably on like episode 5 and then I think I watched, so then I think I watched 5, 6 and 7 at my boyfriend's house and he was like on his phone and he kind of like accidentally started watching it and at the end of episode 7 he was like damn I'm gonna have to download the rest to watch on the train although you can't watch on the train it's not really, it, it gets a tiny bit inappropriate not inappropriate but I just wouldn't want someone looking over me wondering what the hell I was watching and I feel like it's one of those seasons it's one of those series that can be a bit meh even my boyfriend liked me liked it it was great I highly recommend it I reached the end of episode 8 and I was like oh my god where's episode 9 and 10 just was really really enjoying it and it just ended and actually probably because I thought it was going to carry on I was like extra disappointed that that was the end yeah I highly recommend it I thought it was going to be a bit teeny and it is a little tiny bit teeny but um I thoroughly enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. I've been recommending it to like all my cousins and stuff. It was it was great. I've also been watching Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club. I think that's what it's called. It's all right. It's kind of like Jersey Shore. It's on once a week, which I absolutely hate watching things once a week, but it's easy enough. It just kind of fills the time. It's great background noise. It's not groundbreaking. It's not gripping. But it's, it's nice enough. And that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed it. I was going to slit in some like fashion favourites. But I think I might just do like a winter fashion favourite. Because I think that makes more sense. Because um, it's unlikely that I have fashion favourites every month. Because I wear the same clothes pretty much daily. I also realised that there might be a bit of a stain on my jumper. If you can see that, I'm sorry. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. I actually really enjoyed filming it. I think because I was in like a really happy mood because I was just listening to love stories. I've, and I've been promising certain videos for ages, but I'm just like not in the right headspace to film some of them. So I need to like get there. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend or possibly week if you're watching this in a couple of days. But I shall see you all very soon. Bye.